Today we're joined by Dawn Cartwright. Um, she is a tantric visionary and has been teaching and studying Tantra for over 22 years. Thank you. Thanks, Kena. So thank you all so much for being here today. Welcome to the Center for Healthy Sex. I've been collaborating with Alex and the Center for Healthy Sex for at least three years now, maybe a little bit longer. I've been giving talks here and also working with some of the clients here, offering Tantra as an ancillary modality treatment plan. And for the first couple of years, it was something that we were doing because I'd met Alex and she had experience with me giving talks here and sharing my work. And then in the last year, it's become more formalized as I'm working more and more with clients of therapists to offer support to individuals and couples who are experiencing difficulty with being open-hearted, feeling connected, and with being sexual. As a tantric teacher and someone who studies and teaches Tantra, I'm able to offer an, an experience that I feel is very supportive to the therapeutic model in that I'm teaching the clients specific um, tools for accessing their body and their sensual feelings and how to communicate about that like first how to become aware of those feelings because often when people are having difficulty sexually they're not even able to connect and feel their sexual feelings oftentimes so the first step of, you know usually is making that connection and then creating a vocabulary for them to be able to then share with a partner or with the therapist about what's happening for them in their own sexual experience alone and with a partner so that's also an important thing to realize is that a lot of the work that I'm doing when I'm working with couples and when I'm working with singles is working with people, I'll need to get this unfrozen, to first connect to their own natural innate sexual sensitivity. And that's something that is an ongoing project for most people. And there are actually even many therapists who are wonderful, beautiful clients of mine because we live in a society and a culture where sexuality is, is something that's actually quite repressed and not something that's seen as a natural, joyful part of life. Also, we're sort of taught to believe that sex is something that only happens with one other person while we're naked in a bed. We forget to realize that our sexuality is actually a fountain of vital energy and a source of our own confidence in many ways in and beyond the bedroom. And so when we have difficulty, when we, when we encounter difficulty, and I encounter challenges in my own sexuality, there's not a lot of places where we can go and receive tools, receive meditations and practices where we can have a very healthy experience of our sexuality and begin to bring that material that healthy flowing experience into our lives in our creativity in our work in our relationships with our children passing on a positive healthy sense of sexuality um, creating healthy safe boundaries is all related to how we relate to the world sensually and i'm going to share some of those techniques and practices with you today so you get a little you know a little view into what happens in some of these sessions and I'll also share with you some case studies where I've worked with clients and therapists just to give you an idea of the arc of treatment. Um, so working with all types of individuals and couples, all sexual orientations and all ages. Uh, my youngest clients honestly are my nieces and nephews and I've been <laughs> teaching them Tantra since they were teeny tiny hmm. and um, teaching them about the pleasure of being in a body and the confidence that comes from knowing healthy boundaries and doing this in a way that that they could relate to you know talking about fairies and talking about things that children relate to up until I'd say so far my um, most esteemed client is 85 so mm -hmm. working with with individuals and their sexuality throughout life one of the things I feel is really important for me to realize and for us to realize as a culture is that our sexuality changes over the arc of our life. 
that the sexuality we experience, say, in our teens, thank God, doesn't stay that, <laughs> that hormonally charged all our lives. Um, and then also, you know, the sexuality we experience in our procreative years isn't a stopping place, even though in our culture it's really seen as that's when sexuality ends. We don't think about sexuality beyond childbearing years or once we've completed our family, decided not to have more children. What is our sexual development? And then what is our sexual development as we enter into our golden years and we start to, um, we start to experience you know, aging and, and, and coming into our, I feel like, really a pinnacle for us in our life. So in our culture, we sort of have this very narrow band of what's considered to be the right age to be a sexual human being. Um, but as you can hear from my span that I've worked with, um, it's not over. We still have lots more to experience in a way that nourishes us. So the presenting issues that I work with, of course there are many, but I narrowed it down with Alex's help to these three. So I work with high-functioning individuals and couples who are experiencing difficulty connecting, difficulty feeling open-hearted, and difficulty being sexual. So some variation of that, and I will talk about some of those variations, but, but people who are having that difficulty making connection, maybe they've looked for a relationship for a long time and, and feel that they're not successful in attracting something that's healthy, or they, um, when they are in a relationship, they find themselves feeling very closed down and unable to access deeper emotions and sensitivities. And then also finding sometimes a lot of challenge when it comes to being sexual for many, many different reasons. So those are the people that usually when a therapist is working with a client and they get to the point where they're now ready in their treatment to begin to address these more delicate places, these places where, you know, they've reached a level of being high functioning in the world and they're now ready to work on their sexuality, then this is usually what they present and then they come and work with me. So their Tantra includes practices that support couples and individuals in creating greater intimacy and sexual authenticity in their lives. So authenticity is a very important word. Your idea of what feels authentic for you sexual sexually may, may be very different from someone else's idea of what's authentic sexual, authentically sexual, and may even be different than my idea. But the Tantra paradigm supports each of us accessing our own individual unique authenticity. And that can range from celibacy to marriages with multiple partners. There's so many different ways that people relate and form very healthy productive relationships. And in our culture, again, we have this very narrow band. It's sort of like you are married to a heterosexual partner and then you can be sexual. It's almost like the marriage rules, right? But there are many ways that humans relate with a high degree of respect and love. And, um, and so in this, there's, in the, in the tantric realm, there's a place and acceptance for people to find what's true for them without me putting a stamp on, this is, this is good sexuality, this is bad sexuality, right? And then through this practice, there can be a transformation from repressed or sexuality to free-flowing self-love, confidence, and trust, trust in the experience of sex. So as I'm sure many of you have experienced in your own life and working with couples, sex is a, um, sex is a frame where many, many things happen. It's not just body parts rubbing together. Many parts of our most intimate self come forward and many of our intimate dynamics show up in the sexual realm. So developing trust and developing um, a, a feeling of self-awareness is a great gift that then plays out in other areas of life, not just in bed. The Tantra Ancillary Modality Treatment Plan offers support working in tandem with therapists um, to teach couples and individuals Tantra techniques for creating intimate connection and opening the heart in sex, whether genital or non-genital. It is absolutely possible, and many of my clients have very successful sexual relationships that do not include genital contact. 
So there's, again, there's an arc of possibility here. And again, we usually think if something has happened with my genitals, let's say my, my sexual function has started to change, that it's over for me. And that, again, is a way that we have really limited and sort of repressed the sexual potential of our, of our species and of men and women. And so also this, the, the possibility for many people when they're coming to see me um, have never really, really had the experience of connecting their heart with their sexual experience. Like we see it on the movie screen and we have an expectation that sex is making love. But I would say there's probably 50% and I'm being sort of conservative there. People that I meet where it's either I feel lust or I feel love, but I'm having a difficulty in integrating the two. So this practice is one way that that integration can begin to happen. At the end of the first session, so clients book a session, they're referred by a therapist, and I'm also um, I'm pretty careful about the people that I work with, so I mostly work just by referral. It's rare that I'll get a call just out of the blue, um, because it's very intimate work, and, and, and so when a therapist refers someone, they give a name, then I know. And the, the client comes for a first <coughs> session. In the first session, I give them the initial toolkit. I teach them how to become more aware of their body and I also gain more information about their sexual history and how they're relating sexually. At the end of that session, I strongly encourage them to enroll in a cycle of seven sessions that they prepay for. And what I, I just started doing that actually a year ago and I've found that since I've done that, the success rate with my clients is skyrocketing. It happens so much faster when they come in, they write that first check, they commit to seven sessions. Generally, they're seeing me once a week or every other week. And, um, and it's actually then actually quite, quite delightful to see how quickly they begin to move through um, some of the challenges that they've been having and experience success with sexual connection. During treatment, I interface with the therapist, reporting what comes up in the session. And I really leave that to you. You let me know what you would like to, how much interaction you would like. What I can do is at the end of every session, the clients email me session notes. That's also, I has added a lot to my success, or their success, I feel, is making them responsible for sending me session notes with their homework assignment that I then add to and send back to them. So that's something I can very easily, once a release is signed, once you ask for your client to sign a release, I can CC you on that and you'll just have running information about what your client is working with in the sessions and how they're doing. Mm. And you keep a file, you can be able to keep a file. So I wanted to now share with you um, a couple of treatment plans. And I, I made these gen general so that, that you could get an idea of how the work happens. So the first treatment plan, the first goal that we're working with here in this treatment plan is that the clients will develop ways to connect and open their hearts using Tantra practices. And this will be measured by tracking self-reports of connection and intimacy. So when the clients come in, I initially ask them, what's happening in your life now sexually? And what would you like to have happen in your life sexually? So I have where they are and where they'd like to be. And they type that up, they send it to me, which I would then send to you. And then in each session, we check in about how they're progressing with their own um, their own goals. And, uh, and a lot of times, even with clients, I'll have them have specifics, like we hug for 20 seconds at least twice a day. We have a tantric date once a week. We, so they make some very specific goals um, so that we can measure the progress, their progress. The objectives here is that they'll track their progress, and you know anything that you put attention on starts to grow and starts to change, so this in itself is really helpful. Then the clients learn to identify various ways of connecting and opening their hearts using the Tantra practices, physical and non-physical, alone and with a partner. So this is also very important because oftentimes, and I'll be discussing this in the case histories, couples will come to me and there will be um, there will be a difference in the 
amount, the frequency of how much they would like to be having sex. So I'd say that's one of the, the biggest presenting um, issues is that one of the partner would like sex more often than the other partner. So in, in the sessions, I'm able to instruct both partners how to allow themselves to feel sexual and circulate their sexual energy without a partner as well as with a partner which then creates this wonderful like sort of self-referencing self-nourishing sexual relationship and um, and I found better intimacy with the partner and also to realize this is one of the things that over 22 years of studying, I not only teach Tantra, I'm a huge Tantra um, researcher, and, um, and it's, it's my whole life. And I was just teaching class last night in Marina Del Rey, and my students there are advanced students. They've been with me for quite some time, working with me regularly. And they were talking about practice and how they would practice with each other. And, um, and, and I reminded them that every moment is a moment for practice. You don't turn it on and turn it off. Sexuality, you know, even though that's what we've been taught, isn't something that's a switch that's turned on and off. It's a constant state of aliveness. It's a constant state of availability with very healthy boundaries. Um, becomes an exquisite way to live. Not something that you just make an appointment for once a week. Yeah? And so then, what does that do? It creates a feeling of sexual fullness and satisfaction. Whether my partner is here or has moved away, whether I'm single or my partner's had a baby recently or whatever's happening. Um, and this actually is incredibly possible. Mm -hmm. I'm smiling because just recently in my own practice, <laughs> there was a day, my own practice, which is my life, um, I'm walking, I'm just walk. I live in Santa Monica, which is heaven on earth anyway, but I'm walking and I just realized how incredibly sexually fulfilled I felt walking on a beautiful day in the sun. And I was, even, even me, I was a little shocked. Like, I checked myself, like, no, 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 this isn't okay. I have to be naked with a partner to be feeling this. <laughs> so I feel like this is stretching the imagination of our culture really changing the possibility, and in ways that are, that are grounded and easy to understand. So the third objective here is that clients will learn tantra coping strategies for feeling connection and open-heartedness, even in distance. So all my couples have a neutral behavior. They engage in some of the sexual practices that I'm teaching them, but they always have a neutral behavior. And whenever something is triggered or any disassociation begins to happen, they, they move to the neutral behavior. Often it's, um, it's spooning or breathing together. And so they moved into neutral behavior so that they can better integrate whatever is arising. And then, and then they usually take a break and then practice again the next day. So here they are the interventions and strategies. So Tantra sessions every week or every two weeks to learn simple heart opening practices, including seeing each other again for the first time. How many of you have heard of, I'm learning this word, hedontic, hedotic, hedontic? Um, adaptation. So one of two of my friends who are psychologists are really up on this about how we reach a level of happiness and we just kind of stay there. It means we get used to things. And so Tantra teaches us how to really truly see everything for the very first time because you're not the same person you were when you went to bed last night. Mm -hmm. You really aren't. And so we learn how to settle in and actually wake up to this miracle of the human being that we are and that we're sitting in front of. So are you ready to practice? Let's practice a little. So I'm going to ask you just to turn towards somebody around you. And there's lots of people in the room and it's okay if there's a threesome. My name is a so let's have you just turn, and it could be three, it could be three people. So what I'd like you to do is first just Introduce yourself. Just give your name. What's your first name? <laughs> okay. So this is actually, I'm starting you off with one of the most challenging practices um, 
that I teach, believe it or not. I teach people all the way to, to coaching them in, in lovemaking, in bed. But I'm telling you, what I'm teaching you right now <laughs> is even more challenging usually. So I'm going to ask you just to make eye contact with each other. And if you have three, you'll kind of take turns. But just let yourself make eye contact without talking. Okay? So without talking, just make eye contact with the people you're sitting with. And if there's a moment when you feel really uncomfortable, just close your eyes for a moment. But see if you can make eye contact without talking. And just let yourself see this human being as if it's your first time seeing a human being. Notice some of those details that you've started to take for granted in life. And notice any discomfort you might be feeling inside. So we'll just be here for two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> just letting yourself feel all the different feelings that are coming up. Just a few more seconds. Notice what arises for you when you make eye contact. And it's deliberate. And it's more intimate. Okay. And now just, just nod to your partners, thanking them, and then close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, settle into your seat. <coughs> so you might notice already there's a lot of wonderful feelings coming up. Maybe some of them sadness, maybe some anxiety, maybe some joy. Just imagine with the couples and individuals that you're working with, what it would be like for them to slow down enough and settle in enough to really see each other, maybe for the first time in years after having five kids, building a family, and finally sit down. Many times there's lots and lots of tears, people seeing each other in a way they haven't since their honeymoon. And actually, I'll tell you, some people tell me, Dawn, we've never looked at each other like this, even when we were dating. So as you're sitting here, I invite you just to notice what you're feeling inside. Just find a word, and I invite you to be honest. That describes what you're feeling after making that contact. And then open your eyes. Thank you for being so brave. And let's just go around and we'll just say that word. I'll have you start. Sure. Um, open. Uh, melancholy. Mm -hmm. That's good to you. Um, I felt relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, with her, I felt um, the intimacy and comfort. And with her, who I don't know, I felt very, like a sweetness. Her loving and beauty. Centered. That's what I was going to say. Centered. Hesitant. Hmm? Relaxed. Warmth and vulnerability. Hmm. Touched. Hmm. Anxious. <laughs> yeah. Received. Mm -hmm. Thank you all again for being so courageous. And so this is the material that your clients would then bring back to their therapy session with you after doing this 
And typically what I do with couples, I'm easy on them in the beginning. I have them sit very quietly. I first do a guided meditation. And then after some period of time of talking about when we first met and when you first fell in love and how that felt. And then they open their eyes. And usually I, the Kleenex is really close by for both of them. And, um, and then that material that comes up there then is brought into the therapy session and, and very ripe, very crystallized material um, to work with. And then remembering how you felt when you fell in love. And even for singles who are working with me, I find that there's such a push-pull for singles who are really looking for someone in their lives and that they almost don't allow themselves to feel the feelings of love, which then creates a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? If we're sort of guarded and tight around love itself, then we're gonna, it's going to bounce off rather than be attracted. So I very gently invite them just to remember a time when they felt love, even if that was for a niece or a nephew or for a family pet. Sometimes it's easier to start there, and we start there very gently, bringing that kind of vitality alive in the body again after it's been shut down for some time. And then breathing in sync. And this is a really, um, again, sounds really simple, doesn't it? <laughs> but what I find is that, for especially for couples, when they're coming in, it's that they aren't feeling each other, and that's why they're here with me. So one of them will start breathing, and then the other one will say, you know, you're not breathing with me. She said, breathe with me, and you're not paying attention. And the other one goes, wait, what a minute, what, what? And so, so this even in itself, wonderful information. Here it is, tangible. Breathe together. And so from the tantric standpoint, again, creating always, I love to create a, a win for my clients. So they get to see the issue, but then give them a little, a little tip for, okay, place your hand on each other's heart. And just take a moment and feel the rise and fall of the breath. And then let yourself surf the breath. Don't worry about exactly matching it, because sometimes that becomes very mental. We just feel like you're <clears throat> on a float out in the middle of the ocean. And then there's connection. There's this connection, which then reaches far beyond um, just the breathing. And then next is connecting heart to heart, literally breathing heart to heart. Also, just as I did with you, just asking them what they feel often creates a feeling of connection, bringing it into the emotional. And then gentle non-sexual touch is another. I have a question about breathing in sync. Huh? Is it both breathing in at the same time, then both breathing out, or is it breathing like in and out? Like? They do both. Okay. In, the, in the beginning, I have them breathe together because I feel like that's more easily understood. And then, once I feel they've really reached a level of success with that after a session or two, and then I'll have them share the breath, which is a more advanced tantric technique and really beautiful and really wonderful. Um, what I find is, is with in teaching any kind of new skill, you know, starting small, creating success, starting small, creating success, and then all of a sudden there's a day where the gates open up mm. and there's a high level of, of just confidence. And then the client is really leading. I mean, of course, I'm. I'm leading the session, but they are really in the place of feeling very empowered in the session, which is very exciting. So let's do a little breathing on our own now, just so you can have an experience of what that's like um, from this tantric perspective. So if it feels comfortable for you, I invite you just to place one hand on your belly and one on your heart. Either hand in either place, go with your intuition. And the first thing I'm going to invite you to do is to relax into your chair and close your eyes. If you want to open your eyes at any time, please feel free to do that. And if it's easier for you to connect in by closing your eyes, do that. And then the next thing that's very important to know when we're learning Tantra is that there's no goals, really. I have goals up here because we need them to have a conversation. But the goal, if there is one, is to feel what you're feeling. It's not to have an ecstatic experience. It's not to feel sexually aroused. It's to simply feel what you're feeling. So right now, just feel yourself breathing. Feel your body rising and falling. Maybe you can feel the texture of the air as it moves in and out of your nose. 
Maybe you feel how your body presses into the chair a bit more on the inhalation. Let your shoulders relax a little bit. And let your hands melt into your body just a little bit more as if you were warm butter. Now already, I can feel it in the room. There's a little bit more connection starting to happen with yourself. And sometimes that connection feels like numbness. Sometimes it feels comforting. Sometimes it's anxiety producing. Now let's, let's just see what's possible here. Let's take another step. So this would be more of something I would do on a second or third session. I'd like you to imagine that it was possible to move and move your breathing between your two hands, that you could breathe from your belly up to your heart, and you could exhale from your heart down to your belly, that they could share the breath inside your body. Good job. Your face is relaxed and you feel your feet on the ground, your knees are relaxed. You really allow the chair under your body to support you. Now you might find that you start to feel short of breath. That's not unusual. You might feel very calm. And then just a few more breaths. I'd like you just to imagine what it would be like for the love that you feel in your heart to be united with your sexual self. Many of you already know that feeling. Maybe letting yourself feel it a bit more just in these last 10 seconds. Good. And then just two more breaths. And then relax and breathe normally. You can let your hands rest. And just sink into the chair and notice your internal climate now. And let's um, let's check in one more time. So find a word that describes what you feel after the breathing, and we'll start in the back first this time. So that's a word that describes what you feel. I'm not sure. Just a lot of thoughts. A lot of okay. Maybe that's it's anxiety. I don't know. Yeah, that's not unusual. Thank you. Relaxed. Cool. Stillness. Grief. Mm -hmm. Peaceful. Peaceful. Relaxed but alert. Mm -hmm. And fear. Thank you again for your courage. And so again, these are these are pieces of information that then can be brought into the therapy session and worked with as you continue to explore with your clients. So thank you. So the homework 
in this first, with this first goal of creating connection is that the homework assignments will consist of emailing notes and practices covered in the session to Dawn, and then practicing what they've learned, the connection and heart opening techniques at home, two to three times per week. I want to go now to the next goal, and we'll go through this goal a little more quickly because I want to get to some of the case studies. So in this goal, with the same, still with the same clients, would be to improve their sexual connection using Tantra practices, measured by tracking reports of sexual connection. Again, they would tell me what's currently happening in their sexual relationship and what they see as a possibility of, you know, the perfect future. And then we, we put some signposts along for them. So they'll learn Tantra practices that support sexual connection, and they'll learn to identify various ways of connecting sexually using Tantra practices, physical and non-physical, alone and with a partner, and they'll track their progress um, through weekly check-ins. So this is taking it from the first goal, where we're establishing connection, emotional and sensual connection, and now exploring sexual connection that can be genital or non-genital, but a feeling of allowing their sexual energy to be more part of the relationship. Interventions and strategies. So here we have some new ones, breathing heart to heart, which I mentioned before. Melting touch, which I led you through a bit when you were feeling your hands melt into your body. What often happens is that sexually there's sort of this disconnect in the, t in the touch that will happen between individuals and couples. So the melting touch is a way for there to be an actually a more intimate experience of touch. Recognizing, identifying, and opening to sexual arousal. Some people that I've worked with who have a history of early childhood sexual trauma do not recognize sexual arousal when it occurs for them. They've just sort of shut that off. And so together we begin to explore what is sexual arousal? How do I identify it? How does it feel? Is it warm? Is it tingling? Is it a feeling in my belly? Is it a feeling in my genitals? Is it a feeling in my heart? So they, they can make that discovery. And then keeping the heart open in the yes and no. So this is also very important if boundaries have been an issue. So a lot of times um, individuals and couples will have a difficulty maintaining healthy boundaries and feeling safe sexually. They don't want to say no because they don't want to hurt their partner. So we learn how we can say no and keep the heart open at the same time, which is sort of an amazing um, trait to have in the world. You know, it's not something we're usually taught if we say no, we have to shut down. And here we're taught how to say no from a loving place and create connection in the no. Sexual communication, how to communicate with touch and wor words, what's needed and where we're feeling and where we are in the arc of our arousal um, with our partners so that together we can um, experience a more successful connection as opposed to, in some cases, working with um, premature ejaculation where there's, um, there's an ejaculation before the partners are ready. So if there's more communication, then there's more possibility of more space for them to feel the arousal as it's beginning and teaching techniques for allowing that arousal to expand through the body as opposed to feel like an urgency in the genitals. And if you've read about Tantra on, on the internet or if you've seen anything on HBO, then this would be the big technique that you've all heard about. So teaching us really how to be very much in touch with sexual arousal leading up to orgasm and how to be masterful in that in a way that's very loving and fun and also very deeply connecting. Um, sexual body listening, so being able to identify um, and listen with our body. It's very similar to the one before. And then sensual touch teaching many ways of touching sensually. Um, um, many couples that come to me, they, they sort of are take off their clothes, get in bed, have an orgasm, go to sleep. And that's, that's sex, and that's how they've been doing it for years. They're busy, they have kids, well, they're lucky if that happens. And so we start to explore um, some of the sweet parts of foreplay and afterplay and connecting that add to not only the sexual experience, but also the relationship outside the bedroom. And then also, again, homework. And so, um, as you know, I said in the beginning, you know, we, I have ideas, or maybe we have ideas about what sex is. 
But sex connects us to something very, very deep and precious inside. A feeling of being seen and seeing another human being, seeing ourselves, of being understood and cared for. And um, <coughs> keeps us healthy, whether we're single or we're with a partner. And so through this treatment modality, there's an opportunity for people to learn tools to become complete sexual beings, whatever that means for them, whatever their orientation, and working in tandem with you as you address the psychological issues that come along with that. So I want to thank you for being here, and I want to take your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you. You said it's not for everyone. Do you find that couples who can't open themselves to spirituality have difficulty with the techniques and strategies you're presenting? You know, that's a great question. I find they don't have trouble with the techniques and strategies. They have trouble with the word Tantra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they hear the word Tantra, and I'm pretty mainstream. Actually, I, I work with many financiers and attorneys and can keep it really main, very, very main. I don't bring in Shakti Shiva. I, I say Yoni as a, it's like a, a nice little pillow talk name. Um, but I try to, I don't put it, even though I study very deeply the spiritual side of Tantra, that's not so much what I'm teaching unless it's asked for. So yeah, initially the word Tantra people think, ay, what is that going to be, like hot oil parties and orgies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I know what's happening in their subconscious. And, um, and, then, and then they come for the session and they're like, oh, this is Tantra. Okay, I can do this. Yeah? Do you provide surrogacy? I don't. I know they have surrogacy here that they, that they refer people to. So, yeah, thank you. So do you have an office? Do people come to you, or do you go to them? I do both. Uh -huh. I work out of my home in Santa Monica. I live near the beach, so I see couples there. But I also um, do out calls, so I'll go to the client's home. And I've even come here before when Alex has had clients who've flown in for a weekend. I've come here and done sessions. So I, I work both ways. Mm -hmm. Are all of your sessions, including the couples, are they all throughout the whole six, seven, eight, whatever sessions, fully clothed? Mm -hmm. the, ses the first cycle of seven sessions are all fully clothed. And then it depends on how long I've been working with the clients and where they are. Then I may suggest in the second or third cycle of seven sessions some of the sensual massage work. In the sensual massage work, they can always choose to keep their clothes on. We can work with the extremities, or they can keep on their underwear. Yeah. And you're always fully clothed. I'm always fully clothed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There's very much a boundary between. Sure. I mean, I've been invited into some wonderful marriages. And I was, you know, I was like, you. wow, you have a great marriage. Thanks for the invitation, but no, it's. Um, yeah, it's yeah, that must be difficult because you have to keep that boundary because they, they get so relaxed and so yeah, open. Yeah, it's so happy. It's almost 60s time. Yeah, you know? well, that's what 22 time. years does for you. You know, you yeah. name it, I've experienced it, and I have a wonderful way of setting a loving boundary and staying that's with right. my heart open while I say no. Mm -hmm. So everybody mm -hmm. feels like a win-win walking mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. How would you say that? Like how when they ask me? Yeah, like how I'm, would you say no? Like, oh. With your heart open. Yeah, with my heart open. So yeah. what I will do is I will say, you two, I'm so enjoying the connection that I'm seeing between the two of you, and it's beautiful. And I invite you to take it home and enjoy it with each other. No? So that's no. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't actually say the word no? I could. I mean, if it gets to that point, I can say no. I have had to have some conversations with very loving people where I say it. And I've just said to them, I love, actually love, at this point I've worked with them for years, I really love the two of you so very much. I love working with you. And I don't see myself as part of your marriage. And if you want me to interview women, I'm ha I'll help you. <laughs> I'll help you do that. I don't have judgment at all. I'll help you interview the right woman. I actually said that to them. But I'm not that woman. You know, and I just keep staying engaged with them from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And one more, yeah. Hi. At the 
top and in one of the early slides it said high functioning individuals and couples. And I'm wondering how you define that or where the line is for what you're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important question. It's a great question. Usually the therapists referring to me are referring to me high-functioning people who they feel are really ready to do the tools. Sometimes people will call me, and then I realize quite, quite e I can listen <coughs> to how they're presenting, how they're describing their sexual experience. And in that description, after 22 years, I can feel the difference between psychosis, when someone's describing their experience and there's some psychosis there, and then when they're actually experiencing a spiritual awakening. So it is a fine line, but what I find is that this, with the psychosis is there's typically a sharing, like wet, a lot of detail, and a lot of I'm not that kind of person things being said. And for a person who's actually integrated, there's not the defense of I'm not that kind of person, or I fully dealt with my issues. So when somebody talks a lot about having <laughs> fully dealt with their issues, it's a red flag for mm -hmm. me. And um, So that's usually how I can tell the difference. If someone has just discovered an early childhood sexual trauma, then I'll ask them to work with their, their therapist for a period of time until the therapist feels it's appropriate to come in and work with me. So I have said, you know, you know, let's work together in the future. This doesn't feel like the right time. It feels like a better time for psychotherapy. And typically then what will happen is if one time, years ago, one slipped in, I was doing a session, and she was actually inviting me to repeat the trauma. She was actually asking me to touch her in a certain place in a certain way. And so then I, I referred her out. So mm -hmm. it's actually pretty pretty clear, um, I find, yeah. Thank you. So, so thank, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Feel free to um, call yeah, me. You can fine. give your clients yeah. my name and number. Just say they were referred by you. I would love to work with you. It would be a great honor.